Mr. Bright is Bermuda's youngest premier. He is a graduate of the George Washington University in Washington, D.C., where he graduated cum laude with a Bachelor of Business Administration, double majoring in finance and information systems. He was awarded the George Washington University Presidential Administrative Fellowship Award and received his Master's of Science degree in Information Systems Development in 2003. Mr. Bright attained a Project Management Professional Certificate in 2009 and is also a licensed private pilot. An entrepreneur, Prima Bright started GMD Consultant Limited, an IT consulting company focusing on project management. He served as president since its inception until 2016 when he stepped down upon being appointed leader of the opposition. Premier Berg co-founded Hitch Limited and was the lead developer for the award-winning Hitch Mobile Lab, enabling Bermuda residents to hail taxis. In the past, Premier Bird has served on many different boards, such as the Tourism Board, National Training Board, as a director of the Bermuda Chamber of Commerce, and has been a director of the Bermuda Economic Development Corporation. Premier Bird is also active in the local and international public services and community organizations. He is a member of Alpha Phi Fraternity Incorporated, the Western Stars Sports Club, and Devonshire Recreation Club. Premier Bright and his wife Christine have two children, Nia and Edward. It is a privilege to present to you our newly appointed Premier, the Honorable E. David Bright, JPMP. There's a lot of bright lights in here, and there's a lot of people. First of all, I want to thank uh, Miss Tiaja Bean for that wonderful introduction. Thank you, Tiaja. And before I begin, I know that they were given birthday greetings all around, uh, but as a politician, we know that the number one people that we have to listen to are our constituents, and a constituent of mine that I saw on the street told me that I have to wish her sister, Miss Ann Caesar, happy birthday. So happy birthday to you, Miss Ann Caesar. Now, I'm aware that protocol has already been established, but quite frankly, as a new premier, and particularly as a premier of a labor party at a Labor Day banquet, I want the office of premier to bestow all of the glory, all the respect, and all the formality of the office onto tonight's proceedings. So please, family, with your indulgence, I wish to state to Brother Chris Ferbert, the president of the Bermuda Industrial Union, to the special guests at the podium, to the officers and members of the Bermuda Industrial Union, to the officers and members of the Bermuda Trade Unionist Congress, to the ministers of the cabinet and members of the legislature, to the officers and members of the Bermuda Progressive Labor Party, to my wife, to my father, to my mother, and to my family, and also to Bermuda's youth, young leaders, and our future, and to everyone who came tonight in the spirit of solidarity as the Premier of Bermuda, I bid you good evening and congratulations as you celebrate Labor Day 2017. That felt good. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to history. And I say welcome to history because that is precisely why we are here this evening, as we are living history right now. And when they look back in the future and wonder what it was like after that landslide victory, they'll be looking at this night, six weeks after the general election returned a Labor Party to government and the night when Labor celebrated that triumph. It's all right, you can clap. Because historians will say, on the 18th of July, the people spoke. No, that's not right. On the 18th of July, the people shouted. 
They screamed, they yelled, and to use a word, they exhaled. But if I say they, that's what the One Bermuda Alliance would say, isn't it? They would say, why didn't they vote for us? I can't believe they didn't vote for us. So let me change what I just said, family. The people of Bermuda shouted, we screamed, we yelled, and we exhaled. But the people did not just vote for the PLP. They voted against the status quo, and they voted for a new way. The people voted against the discrimination of Bermudians and for a government that would put Bermudians first. They voted against two Bermudas and voted for, as the young people told us, social equality. They voted against runaway capitalism and they voted for labor. That's right, they voted for labor. Yes, I see you. So I know I'm gonna be told off for this on Tuesday as I think the Royal Gazette's already gone to print for tonight. <laughs> but I still need to say it, that during the campaign, it was clear that the PLP thought that Bermudians should be working before or even alongside non-Bermudians. The other guys thought non-Bermudians were the only priority. So when I say that labor won, it's no small thing. And if you doubt how important that fact is, I wish to relate a story that one of my ministers told me. And yes, he's here tonight. Because while settling into his new role, members of staff were contacting him on WhatsApp and Facebook and by email, telling him things that had been happening over the years. The discriminatory practices, the Bermudians being held back while non-Bermudians were excelling. The workers were telling him horrifying stories of pay differences and benefits for some and not all, about disciplinary actions that seemed arbitrary. He wondered how he could reassure them that it was a new day in Bermuda. So he told them that he hears them loud and clear. He feels their pain. And he said that he needs to tell them something. Because up until July 18th, your thoughts about Bermudians in the workplace, the feelings you had when you saw injustice, the values that your parents had instilled in you well before July 18th, you were the revolutionary, the rebel, the troublemaker, who just wouldn't shut up and do their job. And they were the establishment. Well, guess what? Those days are over. And if anyone thinks that they can justify not doing what we said in our campaign, putting Bermudians first, then they are sorely mistaken. Let me be clear, being Bermudian and working in Bermuda and using all your potential and being properly rewarded for it is not revolutionary. That is the way it should be. So welcome to the new establishment. And I can tell you, that minister is deadly serious too. You know, when your mama used to say, don't test me. Okay, maybe that was just my mom. Hi mom. Anyway, I wouldn't test that minister's commitment or this government's commitment to Bermudians because it is very important that we appreciate exactly what happened the last election, and that was the popular vote. Because it's important, and we must understand, that the Progressive Labor Party and Labor were under severe attack. We were outspent by 10 to 1. You couldn't go on your computer without seeing a wonderful One Bermuda Alliance ad. Your phone wasn't safe from seeing the wonderful picture of Michael Dunkley. The media was biased in ways that you can't imagine. And the more desperate the One Bermuda Alliance got, the nastier they got. But in the face of their tricks, in the face of their misleading, and in the face of their bribes, 
Remember that money that they're offering to everyone? We maintain our message. In the face of all of that nonsense, 59% of the Bermudian voters endorsed us and our message of equality. They voted for us to crush the idea of the two Bermudas. And with the help of God, and with the help of those of you in this room, we will dismantle the structures that make Bermuda's wealth work for one Bermuda while it continues to flog the other. And in an election where young Dennis Lister III beats Jeff, it'll take a miracle to beat me, Sousa. And in an election where MP Chris Famous, I see him somewhere, puts Bob Airport for sale out to pasture. 24 to 12 seats sounds about right, doesn't it? No, no, I didn't hear you, doesn't it? You have to understand, family, I'm a little bit excited because I've been waiting for about two months to be able to address a room of friends like this. And I am grateful for the opportunity. Because ever since the general election, people like you have been asking us, our MPs and our ministers, what now? What comes next? How do we use that mandate that we just attained? Well, to answer that question, I would like to rewind just a little bit. And I'll come at that question from a different angle. Because we must remember how we got here. You may remember that the former government was being a little less than honest when they wanted civil servants, their own workers, to accept another furlough day. Rather than even discuss other cost-cutting exercises that would not affect people's jobs and wages. You may remember that the former government wanted to introduce a pathway to Bermuda status for some residents. Well, in the face of that anti-Bermudian aggression, in the face of knowing that we were not being treated fairly, three men emerged. In truth, they emerged at a time when my own party may not have been as responsive to the crises as we could have been. But it doesn't matter, because as the saying goes, cometh the hour, cometh the man. In this case, however, it was more cometh the hour, cometh the men, M-E-N. I don't know the details of how they strategize, where they did so, nor can I tell you how many meetings they had in advance of launching and going public. And I really have no idea, I kind of do, how they picked the color red. <laughs> But I can tell you that there are not many more impressive sights than seeing thousands of workers marching through Hamilton demanding fairness. There are not many more impressive sights than seeing 5,000 workers hold vigil, hold firm to their views, their beliefs, and their rights, and holding firm to each other on cabinet grounds despite the rain. And there are not many more powerful sights than seeing 5,000 Bermudians stop the One Bermuda Alliance from trying to go back on that platform promise, yes, Senator Caesar, I see you, to not give Bermudian status to 1,000 Bermudians. And so, the men who came when our hour came were Brother Chris Ferber, Brother Jason Hayward, and Reverend Brother Nicholas Tweed. Brothers, please stand up and allow us gather here tonight to give you a small measure of the massive amount of respect and credit that you deserve for inspiring, creating, and leading the People's Campaign. Thank you. Now, you may have realized that Brother Jason's not here. He did have to leave for a family um, incident, so we wish him well. Um, but thank you for that family. And that was just a small recognition. 
But brothers, please accept the sincere appreciation, respect, and thanks for standing up, standing tall, and being counted. But it just wasn't the massive shows of solidarity during the Pathways catastrophe that set the stage for a Labor Party to win government. It was also the solidarity that arose to attack one simple act of unfairness in the workplace. And in some ways, that one act of cruelty would set the stage for a labor victory that we experienced on July 18th. Because it was about people that were losing jobs. And it was a huge issue for one Bermuda. But there was nothing, no big deal, for the other Bermuda. It was the firing of a group of employees at the Hamilton Princess, remember? In the face of arrogance, the BIU stance was simple. You are wrong. It is clear. Take them back. As it always does in the spirit of solidarity, the BIU took up the cause of their brothers and sisters who had been fired. The BIU march. Is it coming back to you, family? As the marchers went down Front Street, a woman on the balcony at a restaurant shouted at them. Go back to work. Now you know, when you're on the front line of social justice in this country, sometimes being shouted at is the best you can hope for. Right, Reverend Tweed? <laughs> if you really want to know what happens when you stand up for social justice, there is a living example right there. Now, the former government and the employer had been surprised by the march. But they were solid in their decision. But then the marchers paused outside the cabinet building and directed their protests at that building. Actually, the woman shouting for the workers to get back to work and for them to be grateful that you have a job was the executive director of the Chamber of Commerce. And she was fired for her actions. But that made Bermudians stand up and take notes. It was a pivotal moment. But family, let me ask you, do you remember what Brother President Chris Famous said in reply? Even though his members had been insulted and harassed, the trade unionist in him came out in his response as he said, and I quote, my opinion is still that she should not have lost her job, although I understand what happened was serious, end quote. See, that family is principle. That is what is applied throughout. And the same that he stood for for his members, he would stand for that lady even in the face of her vitriol. So believe it or not, that was in 2014, long before ACON, long before Pathways. But you see, over the past four years, we have lived in a Bermuda where almost every union in this country had to march. And if you are here tonight at your first union function, then you may not be aware of the effectiveness of marches. In fact, saying that reminds me of a story that I was told by a friend. He's a black Bermudian, and he told me that he had a friendship with an older white Bermudian woman that lasted about 15 years. He told me that it was a true friendship where they were open and honest in their discussions about race and the challenges faced in our country. He told me how when his friend read Jonathan Smith's book, Island Flames, she was reading it and would call him excited about what she learned and she seemed particularly interested and impressed with the late Dame Lois Brown Evans and her efforts to represent her clients, speak to the people, and to spare two lives. She was blown away by the knowledge and one day called to say, I will never underestimate marches again. My whole life I didn't get it. I don't know why people march and now I get it. And I will never discount marching again because people march when they have absolutely no other peaceful means or avenues to achieve the change that they want. <laughs> 
she was family, sorry. The effectiveness of marching is really about the effectiveness of solidarity. If you are connected with the workers, the builders of the economy and of the country, then chances are you can resolve issues by talking, negotiating, and empathizing, and marching is not necessary. However, if you feel that your perspectives are the only correct perspectives, if you feel that you alone know better than everyone else and even the people that you serve, and if you are so disconnected that you do not care how your decisions affect your own employees' quality of life, then as my mother said, if you don't hear, then you shall feel. And I felt a little bit in my younger years. <laughs> Hi, Mom. <laughs> the theme of Labor Day is celebrating solidarity. The solidarity that I have been speaking about so far is external, visible and tangible, expressions that you can see. The marches, the petitions, the press conferences, at that time, solidarity is obvious. However, Despite some challenges, the Bermuda Public Services Union has been steadfast in its resolve and its support of its president. That is internal solidarity, the confidence that comes with unconditional support. And as, result, and it's as a result of the solidarity that Brother Jason Haywood has received, the country has benefited from his fearlessness. So solidarity has gotten us this far, and it got us a victory on July 18th. But what I want to see is not just for us to celebrate solidarity, I want us to celebrate the result of our solidarity. So the question is, what next? Is our solidarity only about marching and expressing frustrations? What do you do with a landslide victory and one of the biggest mandates in Bermuda's history? Labor was founded as workers wanted to ensure that they got their fair share from those who in most instances inherited the land and the money to become the producers in the economy. With our election victory, we have won the tools to make change. And the, that is the power to change laws and to control the public purse. But that alone will not make the change to ensure that the children and grandchildren of today's workers, who we heard earlier, will become the producers of tomorrow. See, the labor movement and the labor party have a chance to write a new script for Bermuda. We can show this country that the lesson of solidarity is unity. Unity of vision and unity of purpose. You see, we already know success. Solidarity made four workers get back their jobs in 2014, ended furlough days in 2015, stopped pathways to status in 2016, and won the government in 2017. Now that the people have chosen to put their trust and belief in us, that our collective leadership can work together, now we have to demonstrate to them what solidarity can achieve. Make no mistake, the majority of Bermudians chose hope, and they chose to believe that since, when given the chance, Bermudians will excel at whatever we set our minds will to and this government will give them that chance. The PLP government will improve our education system. We will provide, we will provide better training and invest in lifelong learning for all of our people. And we will provide more access to capital to boost entrepreneurs. 
but then what? As a community of workers, we will not accomplish our dream of economic empowerment until we understand that through solidarity, we must empower each other by using our collective efforts and begin to harness the forces of cooperative economics. Until we do that, we will not experience true economic empowerment and realize the result of solidarity. We as labor have an awesome responsibility to lead by example. I'll tell you a story about earlier today. I went to the Washington Mall for lunch. I may have seen a few of you, I was walking down Reed Street. And I went to the food court for the first time to get food. And I had about five choices. And no, my love, I didn't choose what I felt like eating. Most, because I love Chinese food. Instead, when faced with the choice of where I was going to eat from, I chose to get food from the restaurants that had Bermudians serving there. <laughs> Having made my choice, I met a young Bermudian, Kevin Richardson, who served me my burrito bowl. You should have seen his face. He recognized me when I came up, and he said, you're the premier, come, let me serve you. <laughs> his pride in serving his country's premier wore my heart. And there we were grinning, because he's serving his premier, and me grinning because I just met this young Bermudian who made me feel proud to be his premier. And the vibe was nice. And see, that small action of community solidarity is powerful. That very small action. And so what we must do, family, is that we must ensure that when the son of a worker comes back home to start his business and hires Bermudians, we must support him. When the daughter of a lifetime worker and laborer, who may have been out on our refuse trucks all day, comes home to open that store and hire Bermudians, we must support her. And by spending our money in the places that reflect our values, we will place more important on the roles that our values play in how we spend our money. And there's one more important lesson of which I have to say, because when you work for these persons who have started up these companies and the companies grow and they begin to become more successful, don't let the envy of the person who started the business, because they might be making a little bit of profit, get you to the point where you feel as though if you need to break off and start your own business and split the pie between the two of you. Go to that person and ask, how can I become a shareholder and we can build more together? See, family, that stunning victory on July 18th has placed a microscope on you and I. Certainly, we are being examined on our labor philosophy, but more importantly, they will question our ability to work together to produce the best that we can. Family, let me be very clear. This is not a revenge mission. I say it again. This is not a revenge mission. Our fellow Bermudians are trusting us. They are trusting that the solidarity that produced marches and demonstration, that demanded respect and change, will produce the Bermuda that works for all of us. The haves will continue to keep theirs but the have-nots will be helped by this government to earn theirs too. Yeah. 
And just like the others were helped by the old establishment, be clear, as my minister said, the new establishment will help Bermudians. We will provide those opportunities, but opportunities alone will not get us where we want to go. We must practice community solidarity so that we can celebrate the benefits of collective solidarity. So family, that is your mission over the next five years. We will lead the government, but you, the workers, must lead in changing our approach to ensure that we can enjoy the benefits of solidarity. Yes, sir. Let us make sure that we spend our money in the places that recognize and celebrate and share our values. Because I can tell you, as I'm standing here tonight, that this government is firmly committed to demolishing the elements in Bermuda that have maintained the two Bermudas. We will weed out the bias and the racism that has held this country in its grip for too long, that has cut off potential, that has ruined access to opportunities by providing a less than high quality education, unfulfilling jobs, and little ability to earn enough to own a piece of the rock. But we have to make sure that we seize this moment in history and resist the temptation to fight amongst each other. Yeah. Fighting amongst each other will not get us what we need to do. And that is the fact that in this country, the workers and we must implement a living wage. I say it one more time, we must implement a living wage. We must reduce the cost of living in this country, and we must ensure that all people, no matter the color of their skin, their gender, or their physical abilities, will get the same wage for the same work. We must ensure that employers give the same benefits to all of their staff and so that Bermudians are hired, treated, and rewarded fairly. And there's a few more things that we have to do, family, because although it's not a revenge mission, justice must still be done. So we must examine the historical injustices of stolen land to ensure that some families finally get their justice. we must ensure that we get to the bottom of the horrors of December 2nd, 2016, where workers and seniors, and I see Ms. Esme Williams over there, were viciously assaulted and find out what happened and the truth because our people deserve no less. Now, as I'm about to take my seat, I want to leave you with this little story about the people we serve and our perspective on service. There was a barber in a city with a little shop with loyal customers. One day, a new barber shop opened right across the street, and the new barber immediately put a window on the, a sign on the window saying, this is the best barber shop in the city. A month later, another barber opened up a shop on the street, and he put up a sign saying, this is the best barber shop in the country. One of the first barbers, dwindling but loyal customers said, Hey, mate, you better get on board and put a sign in your window, too. It seems to work for those other guys. The barber thought about it for a little while and agreed. And the next day, customers began to fill his shop again. His friend came in to congratulate him on his brilliant new sign. And the sign simply read, Best Barber Shop on the Street. <laughs> Thank you.
Like the barber, we will never forget who we serve and on whose support we stand. The One Bermuda Alliance wanted foreign praise so badly that they forgot about their own people suffering. They had so much vanity, they forgot that they were actually public servants. Well, we are the people who we serve. We will not forget who we are, and we will not forget that we are here to take care, just like the barber, of the people on our street. My brothers and sisters, let tonight be the beginning of the rebirth of labor in Bermuda. Yes, the union is active, the government is labor, our mandate is strong, and we can be the best labor movement that the world has seen, and we will do it together in solidarity. United we stand. God bless you and thank you.